When it comes to work, give it your all. When it's time to relax, fully enjoy the moment. It's crucial not to blur the lines between the two. I once had a habit of taking my briefcase to the beach while vacationing with my family. I quickly realized this was a mistake. There I was, physically at the beach, but mentally I was back at the office, consumed by thoughts of work. This not only upset my family, but also diluted the joy of our time together. Conversely, when I was at the office, my mind would wander to thoughts of taking my family to the beach, affecting my productivity. I learned a valuable lesson. Be fully present at the beach. Immerse yourself in the experience of the beach. At the office, focus entirely on work. This way, you do justice to both your professional responsibilities and your personal life. The wisdom I'm referring to is encapsulated in these words. When you work, work. When you play, play. Don't mix the two. Now, at first glance, this may seem like a straightforward idea, but let me assure you, it's a principle that can have a profound impact on your productivity, relationships, and overall well-being. My friends, I invite you today to join me on an exploration an exploration of a philosophy, a way of living that has the power to transform every aspect of your life. A wisdom so profound, yet so simple that once embraced can unlock levels of productivity, fulfillment, and inner peace you may have never thought possible. I'm talking about the art of separating work and play, of giving your complete, undivided attention and energy to whichever realm you currently inhabit professional or personal. When you work, work with intense focus and dedication. And when you play, play wholeheartedly, leaving work behind. Now, I understand this may sound like common sense. Many of you might be thinking, well, of course, I separate work and personal time. That's just basic time management. But let me ask you this. When was the last time you were truly, fully present and engaged in the moment with zero thoughts of work lingering in the back of your when was the last family vacation where you didn't sneak off to check emails or take a quick call from the office? When was the last time you were able to give your spouse, your children, your loved ones, your full, undistracted presence and attention? And on the flip side, when was the last workday where you didn't find your mind wandering, thinking about upcoming personal plans or replaying scenes from the weekend, where you could stay locked in a state of deep work? accomplishing more in a few hours than most do in days. You see, my friends, true separation of work and play is much more than just scheduling. It's a practiced mindset, a commitment to not just separating the time, but separating your entire sphere of thinking and being from one realm to the next. I'll let you in on a little secret that's been key in my own journey of embracing this wisdom for years. I fell into the same traps of trying to juggle everything at once. I'd take my family to the beach feeling guilty for not grinding away at the office. My mind stuck on thoughts of meetings and deadlines while my loved ones frolicked in the waves beside me. Then back at work the next day, I'd be plagued with daydreams of returning to that sun-soaked shore, unable to give my full concentration to the professional tasks at hand. I was successfully being unproductive and unsatisfied in both work and a real talent. Let me tell you, it was during one of those beach trips that the truth finally struck me. There I was, nestled uncomfortably on a towel, my legs tucked awkwardly to avoid the rolling tide as it sloshed over my loafers and slacks. My briefcase laid open beside me as I pecked away on my laptop between glances at the crashing waves. My wife looked over at me, our young kids building sandcastles nearby, and she just shook her head with this look of sadness and disappointment. In that moment, I realized how devastatingly I was failing at being present. By trying to exist in both worlds, simultaneously I was fully experiencing neither. It was like being inflated with truth and wisdom. I shut my laptop, neatly repackaged my briefcase, and looked my wife in the eyes. You're right, I told her. When we're here at the beach as a family, I need to be here fully present in this moment with you and our beautiful children. 
not narrating a spreadsheet in my mind. From that day forward, I made a commitment to separate work and play. When I'm at the office, I'm at the office, utterly focused and immersed in my work. But when I leave those walls, I leave work behind too. My personal time becomes truly work-free, distractions, and let me tell you, once I started living this philosophy, everything changed. My productivity soared. No longer was I hamstrung by looming thoughts of leisure time ahead or reliving weekend experiences in my mind. When I worked, I worked with laser focus. At the same time, my personal life finally had the space to blossom in meaningful ways. Quality time spent with loved ones became richer, no longer diluted by the weighty mental baggage of the office. Every hike, every movie night, every encounter was steeped in purposeful presence. I was living a divided life, yes, but this wasn't some fragmented dichotomy. It was a seamless harmony where each realm was given the respect and devotion it deserved in its own sacred place and time. Work had its place and play had its and never did the two dilute the potency of the other. Now you may be thinking, yeah, Jim, that's all well and good for someone like you, but I'm just a working stiff trying to get by. Separating those worlds is a luxury I can't afford. But nothing could be further from the truth, my friends. This philosophy, this way of living, is available and anyone willing to commit to it. CEOs and custodians alike can unlock its power. And ironically, it's often those who feel the most crunched for time, the most obligated in various directions, who stand to benefit the most. You see, when you learn to devote your full energy to one pursuit at a time, those fractional windows of effort become exponentially more productive. You start getting more done in less time, opening capacity for cherished recreation as well. Think about it. Have you ever arrived at work only to spend the first couple hours just trying to get focus, constantly interrupted by thoughts of everything else going on in your world. And before you know it, your morning is shot, having gotten shockingly little actually accomplished. Now imagine instead that from the moment you stepped into the office, you could be home and immersed in work. Your mind cleared, distractions set aside, capable of delivering profound focus and effort those once unproductive mornings would become master classes of efficiency. And when your workday wrapped, you'd return to your personal life utterly ready to be present, not needing to decompress or switch gears. You'd be able to dive headfirst into hobbies, time with loved ones, or just peaceful solitude without part of your mind still stuck at the office. My friends, this is what separating work and play affords. A richness of existence where every facet of your life is given the attention and energy it deserves. Your work becomes a more rewarding professional pursuit, free from the split focus that can leave us feeling like we're constantly taking half measures. At the same time, your personal life blossoms as you learn to truly experience it, shedding layers of guilt or lingering work thoughts. Does implementing this way of living require discipline and practice? Absolutely. Our bad habits of constantly blending personal and professional didn't form overnight, and it takes conscious effort to rewire those neural pathways. The human mind craves effort saving shortcuts, seeking to multitask as a form of efficiency, when really it's just diffusing our strength. Compartmentalizing this way can feel rigid at first, like going against our natural tendency. But I'm here to tell you, the long-term benefits make it all worthwhile. If you're starting from a place of constant conflict between work and home life, plagued by guilt over not giving enough in either realm, this new paradigm can be challenging initially. You'll likely catch your mind strained to replays of the office while at family functions or daydreams of that weekend trip while hunched over your desk. When this happens, and it will, don't beat yourself up. Self-compassion is key. Simply make a gentle mental note of where your mind has wandered and firmly guide it back to the present, back to the arena where you've decided to apply your full energy and attention in this moment. With practice, these blunders become fewer and farther between. 
What once felt rigid and unnatural becomes just how you operate, fully engaged in professional pursuits while at work and completely checked in to leisure once you've clocked. Developing mental discipline around separating these realms will pay long-term dividends in all areas of your life. But beyond just amplifying your success in each arena, it brings something even more profound, a sense of inner peace and harmony. Think about how much strain and anxiety is caused by constantly juggling those two worlds. The guilt of working while with loved ones, or the stress of personal matters looming while at the office. We're pulled in conflicting directions, never able to fully silence those mounting pressures bearing down from the other sphere of our lives. But by separating work and play with loving diligence, all that destructive inner tension dissolves. When you're working, you can finally be free of the personal life mental baggage, allowing you to experience your professional calling with clarity and focus. And when you're in leisure mode, there's no restlessness from the office calling out. Your time is truly yours. In following this path, you create the ability to be entirely present in your respective realms, to experience work with a profound sense of purpose and show up fully for your professional pursuits. And when it's time for play, you can savor those recreational moments with childlike wonderment, unburdened by job stresses. It's a daily practice in harmonizing those often opposing forces in our modern lives. The drive towards productivity and ambition, coupled with the human need for rest, hobbies, loved ones, and recreational outlets. By segregating the times and spaces for these divergent pursuits, we create the ability to experience each with heightened intensity and integrity. Now you may be wondering if we're meant to separate work and play so Thoroughly, doesn't that just create more rigid boundaries in life? Wouldn't that make us robotic or emotionless, leaving less room for flexibility, playfulness, or spontaneity? I understand that concern, but let me postulate this. By training ourselves to be extraordinary in this separation practice, we actually unlock more freedom and space for rich emotional experiences when the time is right. Instead of our head spaces, always being muddled by that inharmonious blend of obligation and leisure. We create arenas for each experience to be had more profoundly. When it's time to work, we enter a pure flow state of contribution, creativity, and achievement, unseated by personal distractions. And when we then transition to play, our minds are just as conducively clear, able to experience adventures, bonds with loved ones, appreciating nature, and other transcendent joys, free of professional preoccupations. So we're not limiting our humanity or emotional expressiveness. We're creating soulful spaces where each part of our human experience can blossom most vividly and authentically. The stories I could share of how compartmentalizing work and play has enriched my life would fill Tom's. One that comes to mind is a conversation I had with a friend and colleague just a couple years before he passed in the late 90s, we were enjoying a sunny afternoon fishing off the coast, sharing quality time as we often did away from the office grind. Out on that boat with the soothing rock of gentle waves surrounding us was where we found peace and connection, a true oasis to refresh our souls from the everyday hustle. As my friend recounted an elaborate work story between casting his line, I noticed his face grow tense and his voice strained with those familiar hues of job stress. Oh, whoa, easy there. I told him with a chuckle, take a look around. Does anything about this place feel like it has any relation to spreadsheets or quarterly numbers? My friend cracked a smile as the obvious struck him. You're right, you're absolutely right. Work can wait, I'm miles away from all that. His shoulders untensed as he refocused on the present serenity surrounding us. You see, in that moment, he embodied the essence of what I'm sharing with you today. When we compartmentalize those parts of our lives, we create space to fully embrace the magic of each experience without distraction or inner conflict. My friend was able to course correct and return to a state of tranquil presence outdoors because for those sacred hours of personal time, he'd learned to set work aside with loving boundaries. 
On our final fishing trip before his passing, I could see the same appreciative sparkle in his eyes, fully cherishing our ability to separate work and find togetherness through play. I'll never forget the lessons he imparted about being entirely where your feet are planted, no matter if that's the boardroom or the sailing stream. So I entreat you, my friends, allow this wisdom, this principle of separating the divergent pursuits in your life to seep into your soul, not as a rigid dogma or ceaseless obligation, but as a loving framework for finding harmony amid the seeming chaos of our fast paced demanding modern existences. The path will look different for everyone. Some may designate physical spaces or rooms for work versus personal activities. Others will section off sacred time windows accordingly, never to be adulterated by the opposite arena's concern. Still others will utilize mental triggers, changing into separate uniforms or accessorizing to signal a mindset shift between modes. However you implement this paradigm, keep returning to your reasoning. That separating work and play isn't about creating bubbles or limitations. It's about granting each facet of your humanity its due diligence and presence. Work earns our full-bodied commitment without apology and our personal longings and relationships should experience the same depth of care. With steadfast practice over time, this once fragmented way of living will become your harmonic operating system. A smooth transition between states where you bring your boldest energies to each realm, unmuddied by the inclinations of the other. Your productivity will know no bounds as you slice through tasks with monk-like focus. And your personal joy will transcend as you learn to experience each moment cleanly, free of professional burdens in those times. Every instance where work arises in your dedicated personal periods, make a gentle note and return your mind to the present beauty surrounding you, be it funny movies with your kids or quiet Sunday coffee rituals. And when those weekend daydreams start trickling in mid-work day, simply smile, re-implaning your course on the productive task at hand. Over time, these Momentary deviations will become fewer as your mind builds circumstances, specific patterns around where to direct its energy at any given time. Before long, it will feel utterly natural to work with profound focus and play with unbridled enthusiasm. This harmonious duality will light your path to rich rewards in both arenas. And most importantly, extend compassion to yourself always through this evolution. None of us are perfect at segregating work from play, and beating yourself up over mental lapses only breeds more discord. Smile at those human moments with kindness, correct your course tenderly, and apply this paradigm with a heart of exploration versus rigid dogma. There will be inevitable times where the boundaries blur due to legitimate obligations, family emergencies, or urgent work demands that briefly blend those arms. But by having this principle of separation at your core, you'll simply flow back into harmonic rhythm without self-judgment. As soon as those requisite blips resolve, what I'm sharing with you today, my friends, is a pathway to freedom, a means of escaping the inner prison of constant societal pulls, of battling guilt and dispersed focus, no matter your chosen arena. It's nothing less than a potential for rebirth into harmonious experience of this wildly multifaceted journey of living we're all on. When we learn to separate work and play, not just on calendars, but in our hearts and minds, we create sacred spaces to embody the purest virtues of each role. We become extraordinary professionals, pouring undivided passion into our professional crafts and missions. And we become extraordinary humans, relishing the awe of nature, the hearty laughter of loved ones, the nourishment of heartfelt hobbies and creative pursuits. No longer are we diluting these experiences by living in mental overlap. We grant each part of our identity the reverence and integrity it merits, drinking fully from the goblets of both productivity and leisure as we flow seamlessly between states. This harmonious compartmentalizing begins to bleed into other areas beyond just work and play, 
creating entirely new spheres of empowered living. We cultivate the ability to be entirely emotionally present, whether amidst family bonding or navigating life's tougher personal challenges. We learn to partition things like spontaneous community connections or creative bursts of inspiration, allowing these moments their own spaces to breathe and flourish. A kaleidoscope of integrated experiences where we're no longer contorting ourselves to chase each pursuit in conflict. Rather, we experience the graceful dance between all life's glorious arenas with the composure and energetic devotion each merits in flow. Could this path help you become wealthier or advance your career? Absolutely. By applying profound focus to your professional life without competing distractions, you'll discover heightened levels of achievement. But this philosophy extends far beyond just monetary gain or status markers. It's about our nicheness, the supreme reward of experiencing each facet of your humanity most vividly. The greatest entrepreneurs, creative parents, spouses, community servants, and adventurers all recognize that their pursuits and passions require fullness of presence. By unifying around this principle, you'll start experiencing each endeavor at exponentially more rewarding and impactful levels. So I leave you with this mantra. When I work, I work. But when I play, I surrender fully to play. Let those words be the lodestone which guides you into sacred separations so you can experience the most dynamic harmonies. There will absolutely be stumbles along this path, moments where lingering thoughts or obligations creep into your presentatrial windows, be they personal or professional. That's natural. We're flawed beings exploring something countercultural. When those moments of mental crossover occur, treat them with compassion rather than self-judgment. Gently reassert your commitment to being fully present and guide your mind back to the arena you've chosen to inhabit in that instance. Over time, this will become second nature, a beautiful rhythm of immersion in each pursuit. My friends, I can't overstate how transformative this way of living has been for me and those around me who've adopted it. I think back to the years robbed from truly experiencing precious personal moments or the countless work days hazed by lingering thoughts of upcoming leisure. All that divided energy, all those miracles of presence lost to a muddled existence. But then I reflect on the man I've become by separating those worlds with tenderness, experiencing work with a potent, precise dedication unlike anything I'd known, and experiencing play with a childlike wonderment equally unhindered by professional obligations constantly gnawing at my psyche. It's nothing short of a rebirth in the harmonized being. I can vividly recall one summer weekend years ago, gathered for a backyard barbecue with family. In years past, an occasion like this would have been diluted by the subtle anxieties of work lingering in the background of my mind. Even as I went through the motions of socializing and celebrating, part of me was always mentally checking out, tugged by the gravity of unfinished office tasks and looming meetings on the horizon. But on this particular sun-drenched afternoon, something felt profoundly different. As I joyfully flipped burgers and guided my young grandchildren in long games, my mind was fully present, not an ounce of it leaning into future professional commitments or replays of past workday stresses. For those sacred hours, I was able to experience the simple magic of sharing food, laughter, and connection with loved ones. No divide, no tension, just complete immersion in this vibrant pocket of living. When you experience these glimpses of singularity, of being so entirely invested in the here and now, it's like rediscovering some childlike capacity for unbridled presence. You realize just how cluttered our minds can become with self-created distractions, how much psychic real estate gets occupied by looping narratives that have no bearing on the holiness of the current moment. By segregating work from play, you begin training your consciousness in new layers of spaciousness. You experience profoundly rejuvenating moments of looking into your loved one's eyes, utterly transfixed and unburdened. Or meditative spells while tending to a hobby or passion project. 
free of that niggling voice insisting you're neglecting obligations. It's like stumbling upon subtle gateways into transcendent presence. And as you grow more accustomed to this harmonized living, those moments start expanding, shedding long-time tendencies of letting cluttered thoughts govern your daily experience. You'll start catching yourself idly working while half engaged with loved ones and immediately course correct. Fully dropping back into the personal arena you'd intentionally chosen to inhabit in that instance. This is how the meaningful change happens, my friends. Not through somber, white-knuckled dogma, but through compassionate practice and the playful curiosity of a lifetime's exploration. Each momentary lapse isn't a failure. It's another chance to deepen your capacity for presence through loving redirection. Over years and decades, you'll likely notice just how much more vibrant your life experiences themselves become as you progressively master this art of separating work from play. The professional accomplishments somehow feel richer and more satisfying as you gradually eliminate divides of personal thoughts creeping in. Just as poignantly, your personal bondings and recreational joys start radiating with a brightness that simply can't exist amidst constant blending with work's obligations. It's akin to buffing off a layer of mental grime to unveil the stunning nature that's been thriving beneath those clouded lenses all along. Each work pursuit becomes more textured and vibrant. And when you give yourself permission to play, it's as if you're experiencing adventures, hobbies, and interpersonal connections with a profound childlike lucidity once forgotten. So I encourage you to embrace this path of integrated separations, not just as some routine or protocol, but as an evolving art and curiosity for how richly you can experience the multiplicity of life's arenas. Discover the nuances that help you most seamlessly partition these realms. The personal rituals, the environmental cues, the mantra reminders that instantly trigger you into a particular mode of ishness.